What? You don't have an espresso machine in your greenhouse? Get a better greenhouse? You're not going to believe this one. It's already time to put up the peppers. Look at these beauties. Okay, here's the thing. Oh. Quite a few of you guys were asking, how do you know when it's time to pot on? Okay, and we were talking about it in terms of when there were little tiny seedlings. And I told you, if you were using those little module trees, they don't hold all the nutrition that those tiny little plants need. So once they got their first set of true leaves, so that was the second set of leaves to come in, then it was time to pot them up so that they got more nutrition. And you can see here, they've all got their second leaves on them, their true leaves, so that's when I want to get these potted up. So you pot them up and instead of using the seed starting mix, you mix up your own potting mix, which has more compost in it, and you use that. And then that way they get more nutrition. And I also told you, just watch, they will take off now. So I've got the dates here for you because I've been keeping notes for you guys. These peppers were sown on the 12th of January. They germinated, the first lot germinated on the 18th of January, but my King of the North were very, very slow. Well, compared, they were slow to germinate. Peppers generally are slow. So the King of the North, the first one didn't germinate until the 22nd of January. So sown on the 12th and then germinated on the 22nd. But we then potted all of these guys on on the 3rd of February. Remember that one? It was Kate's birthday and she was out painting fences. So that's when these guys got potted on. It is now the 18th of February. So sown on the 12th of January, it's now the 18th of February, and look at these guys. So there's a whole mix of sizes. Now, obviously I potted them up into these bigger modules, and I told you then they were slightly bigger than I would normally like to use, but it's just what I had. Now here's the thing, how do you know it's time to pot on? Well, a bit of experience will tell you that the size of pot they're in, so the size of the little module each plant's in, compared to the size of the plant, so these now have, um, well ignore their very first set of leaves, their baby leaves, so they've now got two, four, six true leaves. So experience tells me they need more, they need more space now. But the reason I have experience is because over the years you see things like this. That's all the roots from these little plants now reaching out the bottom of the pot, desperately trying to find space. That tells me it's time to pot on because the plants need space. So we're going to do that today. So again, we're going to go up a size again today. Ideally, the same as I told you before, we would just want enough to get that plug in with maybe your thumbs round the side and a thumbs worth at the bottom. Ideally, I don't think I'll have a pot that's that specific size. So what have I got? Let's look. Just doing a bit of comparing there because I've got all these pots all different colours. They're all roughly the same size and I need quite a lot. So I'm having to see what I've got here. Wow. A lot of peppers. Okay, let's get going. So I talked about potting mix then rather than seed starting mix. Potting mix just has more of the nutritional stuff in it. So you make that up with a lot more of your compost type stuff in there. Okay, again, I won't go through what's in my mixes today. If you are interested in my mixes and making your own, as usual, I'll put a video at the end where I'll give you all the details and the recipes. Okay. So hold out for that. I'm going to need so many labels. Right, so let's have a look then. Steve. Yeah, look at that. Holds together gorgeous. Lots of gorgeous little roots. So, let's see. 
oh, actually, this pot might just be perfect. Clearly. He was bigger than I realised, because genuinely, I can only get a thumb's worth down the sides. So actually, this pot is spot on. There's nothing exciting about watching me just pot on the same seedlings over and over again. So how about, I've done a few, I'm going to make a coffee for myself and then I'll tell you all about grown peppers start to finish so that you're super ready for the next stage. Sound like a plan? Okay. So we've already done lots of videos on sowing these seeds and bringing on the seedlings. And I told you how they can take quite a long time to germinate. If you grow lots of other veggies like tomatoes, you'll expect these guys to basically germinate as quickly as tomatoes and they won't. You're going to be disappointed. I've seen bell peppers, like these guys, sweet peppers, take three weeks, sometimes four weeks to germinate even with all the perfect conditions. However, if you grow what in America you guys call hot peppers, and here we call them chilies, those little guys can take even longer to germinate. So be patient. But once we're talking about plants, there's a lot of things to start considering. And I consider them to be plants from this stage, once they've got a couple of sets of true leaves. Now, here's the thing. Pepper plants like a lot of direct sunshine, or if you're talking about seedlings indoors, direct light. Generally, you're looking at about minimum six, but ideally eight hours a day of direct, good, strong sunlight. But before you run out and put these guys in the sunniest spot in your garden or your greenhouse, be very wary because Peppers can suffer from something called sun scorch, which means it damages the skin and then that also damages the underlying flesh, just like when we get sunburned. And you'll know you've got it because you'll get a pale patch. Usually for me, it's on the top or the side of the pepper because that's where the sun hits them. But generally, it'll be on the fruit somewhere where the sun hits that fruit. And that pale patch will start to get soft. Now, if you catch it early, you can still use that pepper. You can cut the sun scorched part out and use it. But if you don't catch it early, it can completely ruin that fruit for you. So ideally then, even though these little guys like a lot of sunlight, that part of the day was the strongest sunlight. So afternoon for me, a little bit of shade is a good idea just to protect them. So I've got blinds in my greenhouse for exactly that purpose. If you plant them outdoors, just think of that. You want them somewhere where it is properly sunny and they're going to get that minimum of six hours of direct, strong sunlight a day, but you want to be able to shade them in the afternoon as well. First thing to think about. Peppers also like to be moist. They like their roots to be moist, so don't let them dry out. Now, that doesn't mean you need to soak them all the time. But just remember, plants that give big fruits like peppers do, they use that water to swell the fruits. There's a lot of that moisture in the actual fruits. So these guys like to always have moisture on hand when they need it. Now, once we start getting to this stage, there's some other things we want to think about. Temperatures. 
You guys know I've got these in the house. It is too cold for me to have them in the greenhouse at the moment. That is because these little guys like a minimum, minimum, but would rather be warmer, temperature of about 15 C. When it's colder than that, even just a little bit colder, it can actually stunt their growth. Okay, so you want to make sure you're not putting these out in the cold. And that means nighttime temperatures too. So it might be nice and pleasant in my greenhouse right now. But trust me, tonight it won't be. It's too cold for these little guys. So I won't be able to bring these little guys out into my greenhouse for a good while yet. I want to wait until it is warm overnight in here. Otherwise, it will stunt their growth. Now, talking about growth. Like all plants, there are different stages in its growth and it wants different nutrients for that. Now, at the minute, this is just a little seedling with just the green leaves. But once we start getting flowers and it starts trying to make fruit, this is one of those things on the internet that everyone does differently and everyone will tell you their way is the best. Do you pinch out the first flowers or do you leave them? The thing is, it's totally up to you. I don't, but you may want to. Basically, the reason people pinch the first flowers on their peppers, or on the pepper seedlings rather, is because once that little guy's got a flower, he's going to try and produce fruit, and he's going to put his energy into producing that fruit. You might not want him to do that yet because he's quite small, and you want him to have time to focus on everything else first. So you might want to pinch those little flowers out to stop that. Like I say, I don't. I have done in my early years of growing, but to be honest, I wouldn't say I've really noticed a massive difference by doing it, so I just don't bother. Now, just as the sun comes out, that's a good one to talk about then, talking about pinching out the flowers. What about generally pinching out the stem, the, the growing tip at the top, that's another one you'll hear people tell you about. So this little grown tip at the top, okay, that's where the plant has all the hormones going at the minute telling it to grow up. You may not want your plant to grow up. And again, this is completely up to you. I did a whole series of videos a couple of years ago where I had plants that I had pinched, which means you just basically nip off that grown tip. And I had plants which I hadn't pinched. And the reason I tested it was because some people say you'll get more peppers if you pinch it. And some people say don't pinch it because the peppers you get won't be as good quality. I tested it for me and found that actually pinching it gave me more peppers and better quality peppers. I get lots of really good thick walled peppers. But the real reason I do it is because it keeps the plant at a nice, manageable size. Because it then stunts its growth slightly and gets it to put out side shoots instead of focusing on growing up. And more side shoots, more opportunity to create flowers and fruit. So that's why a lot of people do it. But I just found I prefer the small, manageable plants. So I pinch, you might not. But when do I pinch? Well, actually, I'm probably going to do it very soon. I'm going to want to do it once. There are six really strong leaves on this plant. So at the minute, I've got two, four. When this little set get a bit bigger, more this size, I'll probably do it then. So that's called pinching out. Like I say, I'll put the video link in the description for you if you want to watch that playlist and see the experiment. So we're at the point now where we've pinched out, we've got a nice bushy little pepper, or you've chosen not to pinch out and you've got a slightly taller pepper. If you've pinched off the first flowers, you won't have any flowers on it yet. If you've left the first flowers, you'll have flowers, possibly even forming tiny little fruits. Here's the next thing then. If, like me, you grow your peppers in pots, you're going to continue to feed them from that very first little flower appearing all the way through regular feeds with a high potash feed. So basically, a tomato feed is perfect. If you grow out in your beds and you've amended your soil and you keep on top of your soil, you won't need to feed them. But your situation. 
Now we're going to watch and it's going to form all those little green peppers. And here's a top tip for you. Basically, a plant wants to create flowers so that it can turn them into fruit, ripen the fruit, drop the fruit and dis disperse its seed. That's its whole purpose in life. What we're going to do is we're going to trick it a little bit. Once this little guy has got his fruit on there and they're just starting to ripen, I'm going to start picking some and using them. Not quite ripe yet. Now, it's fine. You can eat green peppers. You don't have to wait until they're technically ripe and they've changed colour. They're just not as sweet and slightly bitter when they're not ripe, but they're still fabulous. I start picking a few then because it signals to the plant that it's lost that opportunity to ripen those fruit and therefore get seed out there. And it encourages it to ripen up what it's got and to produce more fruit. Just a little tip. But there you go. Start to finish then, growing your peppers. Keep them moist, nice, even watering. Consider if you want to pinch off the first flowers. Consider if you want to pinch the plant to make it bulk out a bit. Keep feeding it. If it's in a pot, maybe weekly with a tomato feed. If it's in the ground in a raised bed, if you've amended your soil, you won't need to feed it, but only you'll know how good your soil is. And then protect it from the worst of the sunlight so it doesn't get sun scorched. So a wee bit of protection in the afternoon. And then when you get close to the time when you're going to get ripe fruit, if you pick some of those ones that are just beginning to ripen, it'll speed up all the ripening. There you go. Peppers, start to finish. I can't wait. Okay, I suppose I should go on with potting up the last of these ones then. Hope that was useful then, guys. Playlist of my pepper experiment and the one with making your own seed mixes. That's your next to watch. See you, folks. <laughs>